That's going to make a dent. <laughs> so, as a kid growing up in the 70s, I love science fiction movies. My favorites, Planet of the Apes, Soylent Green, The Omega Man, and, of course, Fried Green Tomatoes. <laughs> As a kid, I imagined the future as frightening and weird. Every day would be like Black Friday at Walmart, battling roves, roving bands of marauders. Who could forget Mad Max and its sequel, The Road Warrior, riveting tales of dystopian Earth where lawlessness reigns and survival becomes a daily challenge, much like being married to Cat. <laughs> Then there's Kurt Russell as Snake Plissken in Escape from New York and later Los Angeles. Funny how those walls worked. RoboCop, a very funny film, deadpan in its take on a society sinking in crime and ambivalence. I love these movies because like Joy Behar remaining employed, I assumed it couldn't happen. <laughs> Unless it could be caused by one major event, like a meteor strike or a nuclear war or Hillary becoming president. <laughs> I had no idea that society, through its own inaction and cowardice, could just let it happen, day by day, slowly, until lo and behold, the dystopia shows up at your front door like a naked Amway salesman. <laughs> but that's what's happening. The stats say so, but they're ignored. The local news says so, but they're ignored, too. America has become the frog sitting in that pot of slow-boiling water, having no idea that in time, he'll be some French guy's appetizer. Which means <laughs> it's time for... Yeah, things don't look good. <laughs> oh, yeah. You ever hear of Burgerville? It's a famous chain of burger joints. Surprised? <laughs> In Portland. It had to close one of its most popular places due to rising crime, homelessness, and human waste. It's true. Apparently, their customers prefer their cheeseburgers without a side of poop. <laughs> Amazing, your business closes because you're literally tired of all the <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Denver spends way more money on the homeless per person than on students or veterans. New York, too. 800 million bucks was spent on dealing with the homeless problem. But have you been to New York lately? <laughs> have you been to any major city? It's like Burning Man minus the good drugs. <laughs> Some city streets look like the inside of Charlie Sheen's mouth. <laughs> In San Francisco, a woman leans outside a car window brandishing an AK-47. I guess Pelosi's handling her own security now. <laughs> in Minnesota, a man beheaded a woman on a city street while they were sitting in traffic. Must have been a long light. <laughs> this week, a woman shot another woman dead on a busy New York City street before casually returning to her white double-parked SUV. How did she not get a parking ticket? I'll tell you why. The driver had the hazard lights on. <laughs> Talk about priorities. Yeah, there's nothing worse than getting a parking ticket piled on top of the life sentence for cold-blooded murder. Yeah, go ahead and shoot him. I'll just turn on the hazard lights. <laughs> Meanwhile, a woman kills her husband in Indiana, chops him up, and gets the kids to help dispose of the body. And I used to complain when I was asked to take out the trash. <laughs> but I guess that's a good way to get kids to do the chores. And at least she turned tragedy into some quality time with the kids. <laughs> In other news, an elderly man gets brutally beaten. And no, I'm not talking about Joe Biden's latest approval ratings. <laughs> Another in a wheelchair gets tossed and ransacked by ghouls. A would-be pervert chokes a woman out and drags her off the subway. Who knew Andrew Cuomo takes the subway to work? <laughs> Stray gunfire strikes people sitting on a bus in Queens. Men casually walk over and slug elderly women on the street. Other men rip jewelry off women's necks in broad daylight. That's 10 minutes of research on my part of the past week. Just 10 minutes. The same time it takes Biden to answer the question, oatmeal or cream of wheat? <laughs> Meanwhile, what do you hear from the media? Let's turn to the classic. If you watch a certain state TV and you listen to conservative media, you would think that you know, uh, it, entire cities are just, you know, in, in brawled in fights and fires and whatever. We went out and had a great dinner in New York City tonight. People actually walked up to us and said, thank you for, I watch you every night. I can't believe they thought they did to do a double take at us actually hanging out and not seeing us on the TV screen. That clip has been played more times than bingo at the villages. <laughs> and it should. And our politicians, the loudest voices say to fund the police, but then they deny it. And then later they admit, yeah, that's exactly what we want. 
I won't let them get that off. You can't get that off. I'm going to make sure I have security because I know I have had attempts on my life and I have too much work to do. There are too many people that need help right now for me to, to allow that. So if I end up spending 200000 if I spend 10, 10, 10 more dollars on it, you know what? I get to be here to do the work. So suck it up and defunding the police has to happen. We need to defund the police and put that money into social safety nets. Her, I know her slogan for the re-election campaign, suck it up. <laughs> really, you expect me to believe people voted for her. In major cities all over, life is changing for the worse. And it's incremental, but it's inexorable. And why is that? Why are we fine with this? I think about this a lot when I'm not fantasizing about Stuart Varney. <laughs> I think I figured it out, though. It's a perfect storm of distraction and exploitation. We are distracted. We have everything we need, an abundance of food, a never-ending faucet of trivia, news cat videos, everything. Instagram and TikTok keep the young ones enthralled. Twitter keeps the maniacs frothing over microaggressions. Porn keeps the boys glued to the screens because there is no stopgap. And the cancel culture mob decides whether we live or die. We are the luckiest generation of spoiled brats in the history of the world. But because of that, we stopped minding the store. And in walked the worst of the worst, the radicals, who said to themselves, while these suckers are nose deep in their phones, we can do this. Now they're in every power center. They're the politicians, the DAs, the professors, the judges, the social media honchos, even kindergarten teachers. So yeah, I finally got to live in the movies that I loved. But sadly, it's gonna end like the Planet of the Apes. Happy Friday, everyone. <laughs> You can get a cavity in your eyeball just by looking at her. Outnumbered co-host Emily Campagno. She knows financing like I know belly dancing. And believe me, that's a lot. Financial analyst Heather Zumaraga. He's the tallest DeVito in recorded history. Writer and comedian Joe Ravido. And she's like a plastic fork. Sharp, can snap, and is sometimes spotted laying on the street. Fox News contribute at top. Cat tip. That was the most upbeat monologue I've ever written, Emily. Happy Friday. Yeah. <laughs> Happy hour has begun. So I have a question. I've always been thinking about this. If it goes really bad, and the world splits between hordes of fiends and marauders and good people trying to survive, which side would you be on? Mm. Well, the good ones, for sure. But you know what? Why not just join the bad guys? And then you'll be safe, Emily. Because more days living in hell is not worth one day of living freely and happily. Mm. I'd rather... <laughs> Um, oh. And I feel like we're seeing that play out in the city of Portland. So you you mentioned the the Burger Burgerville. Yes, the um, yeah Charlie Foxtrot happening there, <laughs> and their small business owners are now paying for armed security and for bulletproof vests. Right. Now, this is on top of all their lost revenue during COVID. It's on top of their costs with COVID compliance from the government, right, and protection and all that stuff. And then astronomical West Coast taxes. Mm -hmm. And now their livelihoods have been burned down in a 100-day-plus riot. They're prevented from even operating their small businesses because of feces smeared on the walls. Oh. Literally the other day, my friend who owns a bar there, I have this on video, got into a fight with a bum that was wielding a machete they call him Ginger Kevin. He's there all the time. Does he have red hair? Yes, this is the reality that's facing these small business owners. Now you know why he's mad. They call him Ginger because yeah. he has red hair. Yeah, we're it's still not working where the are the social workers in that city? <laughs> yeah. So here's the point. If yeah. the government is breaching its duty, it's not protecting its citizens anymore, it's not prosecuting crimes, it's not deterring crimes, there's no penalty for any of these violent crimes, mm -hmm. they're not protecting the citizens, and they're not preventing others from from infringing upon your right to live freely to operate a business, why should we pay taxes then? Exactly. Why should we pay the salaries of these guys who are abdicating their duties, who are incompetent? Mm -hmm. Because clearly they're still going to get elected over and over by that left. So I think we should just all stop paying taxes. That's my idea. I'll see you in jail. <laughs> That's a true revolutionary. You know, Joe, feces, it doesn't sound... It's not as good as it sounds. It's, it, it's not. It sounds cute, like little mice. It's not. And you see that here in New York, just the, the, the walk I have from Penn Station to get to the subway. It's, uh, you think the walking dead is bad. You have to walk through bad. Penn Station? 
Yeah, oh. it's bad. It's running this gauntlet. Oh. And, uh, you know, if you think The Walking Dead is bad, the, the pooping living is no pleasure either. Yes. It's just, it, it, it's so horrifying what's happened. And, and none of it is surprising when you look back. Yeah. That, you know, that we've gotten to this mode where it's punishing people who are productive and rewarding people who refuse to contribute. And, and, and when it gets to the homeless issues, we need to separate out. There are people who are mentally ill, right. they're drug addicts. You need to help those people. But the others are are just sponging. <laughs> I know, they're, they're under 30, they're hanging. I know them. I yeah. see them every day. Yeah. They're on my block. That's they're right. not interested. Yeah. I've actually offered to food and they they get fussy. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they have right. requirements. Is that, is that free range? Yeah. <laughs> I'm free range. My food has to be free range. Yeah, so it's it's very depressing. I mean, when you look at that poor burger place in, yeah. in Portland, well, how could they market and say, well, this burger's flame broiled in a burning federal building next door? Yes. So they got yes. they got to rebrand and just say, come here, take a dump in the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> Although there has been a decrease. That's why you're not in marketing. People, <laughs> people are no longer asking, though, if they can use your restroom, though. They just assume they can use uh, <laughs> the dining area or the parking lot. Exactly. Heather, oh, you, uh, you have, uh, you're an optimist. Did I, I make you really it's sad in the green room? Optimist. You were actually crying while I was <laughs> editing my monologue. It's tough to be an optimist given the monologue, but I think <laughs> um, the empathetic argument should not be increase the welfare state. Mm -hmm. And uh, you bring up a good point, Joe, that some of the homeless do need help. But in general, if you look at the July jobs report this morning, it was great. 954,000 jobs added. Uh, the unemployment rate down to 5.4 percent, 9 million job openings, which tells me the empathetic argument is actually giving the homeless a job right. and getting them education and skills training. It's not just to continuously give them money, as you pointed out. Denver pays on average uh, more they spend on homeless than they do K through 12 education. Amazing. And on average, per homeless person, they're making about the same as a median, the median person's income. That Crazy. lives in Denver. Yeah. That's nuts. So why would you work? That why would you? I'm moving to Denver. Right. right. <laughs> we need you. I love their omelets. <laughs> Kat, you know what? I, I I see America as like as a, like a semi truck that went down a blind alley, so you can't turn around. You can only go in reverse. Oh. oh. <laughs> We'll right I know back. nothing about driving a semi truck <laughs> <laughs> or driving. No, it's so, true. So, What's the uh, solution, Kat? Well, look, I think that the problem is that it's a bit far gone at this point. Mm -hmm. I mean, the city was already literally on fire, and the mayor took the side of the people setting it on but, fire. Yeah. And then he shocked, you know, everyone's shocked that it keeps getting worse. Um, I, I think that obviously you need to. First of all, acknowledge reality. Mm -hmm. That would be step one. Yeah. That would be step one is acknowledging reality and saying this isn't working. Yeah. This isn't working. This isn't a problem that social workers can solve. Mm -hmm. And I say that as the daughter of a social worker. Uh, Sorry. She, well, she's dead now. So, <laughs> okay. um, <laughs> but, like, this is, you, you need law enforcement. Yeah. Or people aren't going to follow the laws. That's that's not hard. Well, you pointed out Cori Bush in the opening monologue, and she said she wants to hire her own private security because she's a victim of a crime. Yeah. I heard Trey Gowdy say, well, who do you think investigates if you're a victim <laughs> of a crime? A psychologist? A social yeah. worker? Yeah. yeah. Also, who are you going to call? Who doesn't get death threats? Yeah. <laughs> say that again, and I'll kill you. Exactly. <laughs> Last uh, Joe, just last word, because we got to move on. Was I wrong to show the last scene of the original Planet of the Apes? I'm I'm pissed off because that finally showed up in my Netflix queue after 50 years. I've been waiting to see that. People got to know the ending of the Planet of the Apes by now. I'm inside. Yeah. It's like I don't need yeah. to say spoiler alert. Yeah. <laughs> Even the apes are trying to leave the planet now. They're, <laughs> they're hitting up Jeff Bezos to ride shotgun. Killer joke. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.